Okay. Cool. Good to go? Yes. Good. Ready. Hello. And hi and welcome. To Boobays. Boobays. That's right. And yes. we are your hosts. I'm Joshua. And I'm Caitlin. And we're here to whisper about some extra some spooky tales. Some sinister shit. Yes. <laughs> dun, ba, da, dun. <laughs> Typically my demon voice is so much better than that, but my voice like <laughs> split. It split in half. It was the demon itself. I've got a lot of phlegm trying to come out of my chest, y'all. I'm sorry. It's that time of year. <laughs> the weather's changing. There we go. Finally, cold, <laughs> coldish, kind of like coldish, but it was like hot and then cold. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why it's like because you're hot like, and you're cold. Mm, 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 mm. I, today, I actually felt like I had allergies, and I don't usually have allergies, but like my nose was all itchy and I felt all stuffy up here. Oh, but now I, I feel fine. But maybe because we saw Sonia, and maybe and Sonia got <gasps> me sick. Probably. But I'm gosh, is all your thoughts gonna Sonya. say no? So we rebuke that. Um, <laughs> But today, what are we talking about today, Caitlin? Today, we are talking about Sinister. Sinister. The 2012 Mm -hmm. um, horror. Supernatural horror film. Supernatural (coughs) god-like horror film. We're getting into some pagan deities as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's pretty cool. Reminds Mm -hmm. me of uh, the ritual. Uh, Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a Norse, a Nordic god. The cousin of Loki, yes. right? Yeah, mm-hmm. the bastard child. Um, yes, yeah, the bastard, yeah, bastard child of Loki, not yeah, his cousin. That's what it was. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, for some reason, I just can remember you kept saying that, so it stuck in my <laughs> head. Um, but yeah, uh, directed by Scott Derrickson and written by C. Robert Cargill. Um, it stars Ethan Hawke, mm-hmm. which is um, who I was just talking to Mike mm-hmm. about. It has been in like a lot of horror films. Yeah, seems and to love horror films. We. We're just talking about uh, the black, black phone. Black phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think he's in one of the Purge movies. Oh, yeah. That would well. make sense. And then he's in uh, something else. And those are Blum, Blumhouse movies as well. Films. So, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I guess I've always said Blumhouse, but I believe it is Blumhouse. It's tomato, potato. You potato, know? tomato. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Whatever floats your boat. Tomato, potato. What? Blumhouse. Blumhouse. That sounds Bloom fancy. Mm-hmm. It does. But then I heard... I heard Aaron Mankey say it the other day on Lauren. He said Blumhouse. And I was like, damn it. That man researched so much of his shit. Like, mm-hmm. I'm sure. He's got to be right. I don't imagine he ever mispronounces yeah. things because he has such a wide, like, variety of people researching for mm-hmm. him and stuff, too, that it's like. Fact uh, checking. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, damn it. But, yeah, damn I'm it. excited to get into it because this is, I remember I watched this when it first came out in 2012. Yeah, so see, I actually <clears throat> don't. We were talking about this yes or mm-hmm. the other day. I don't know when, but um, I I didn't watch this until recently, like within like the last two to three years. Uh-huh. Okay, um, yeah, I saw it in the theater, and when I first watched it, it actually really genuinely freaked me out. Yeah. I had a nightmare about it. It's it is fucking creepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially like I feel like in the theater well, setting. He was in Dead Poet Society. That's right. Mm-hmm. Ethan Hawke. Sorry, now I'm looking He's, at his. He has such a lot, like such a long list. Of I films. love Dead Poet Society. Yeah, he is in The Purge. Mm-hmm. Training Day. Mm-hmm. And so. <clears throat> Magnificent Seven. He was in that. That's right. I haven't seen that. What is this? Glass Onion. Knives Out. He's He was in Knives Out. That was a good movie. I liked it. I liked that they one. They have a sequel coming a out. A lot. Yeah. It's did called, co- it did come out. It's called Glass Onion. That That's what it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. What a great name. The Anyways. Glass Onion and Ethan Hawke. And so, um, ha, uh, yeah, the movie basically follows a family um, and follows this dude who is a writer who is going mm-hmm. to write a novel about a crime that has happened. And he and his family move to a town and there's other details that 
come about that just make the whole story very sinister. Yes. And he seems um, to be a more of a cold case writer. Mm -hmm. And so he'll come in and it's just like a lot of the Internet sleuth nowadays that will like all the time. Reddit people are solving murders and stuff. The, The whole don't fuck with cats thing. Like, Mm -hmm. it's just people doing their own independent research. Mm -hmm. I say that. I've never seen that because I didn't want to see kitties get hurt. (laughs) Um, I haven't seen it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and I I know the general idea. But that there's also, like, we have, there's a limitation that the system can do for people. Yeah. And so other people take it upon themselves to... Uh, put the puzzle pieces together mm-hmm. sometimes and crimes can be solved. They just that got way. some time on their hand and they realize some <laughs> things. And so that's what he does. He's basically a crime writer who comes in a true crime writer and has solved some cases. But as we find out later, has also let uh, possibly some guilty people walk free. Yes, because of his writing. Um, yep. And yeah, we'll get to that part um, from a very unfriendly welcoming <laughs> yeah i know such a, such a mean person it's mm-hmm. like okay you dude calm the fuck down i can but see I guess, their point but also like i don't feel like poking the bear is exactly the best way at like you know yeah just like at least try to be somewhat civil i don't know like be be an adult well it's funny because it was weird like at times he was like nice-ish but then like it was not, all sarcastic yeah and then like at the end, he's like, well, I didn't want to read about people, you know. Chasing cha- you out of town mm-hmm. and stuff. He's like, basically, don't give my town a bad name. Exactly. I don't like, want it my town nice, to Like, it was nice, but, like, still for an agenda of, like, mm-hmm. yeah, he just didn't want him to talk bad about it. But anyways, so we'll get there. Um, it, we start the film pretty, like, pretty heavy because we <laughs> yep. get the Super 8 film kind of type of video style, home mm-hmm. footage style. And um, there's a family... Kind of, of four. Of four. Um, looks very, you know, much like a dad, mom, and two little kiddos. Mm-hmm. And they're... Uh, yeah, what's imagine that this is like on the back <clears throat> of your car. Those little family right? stickers. But it's just... That's oh, so dark. That, yeah, but kind of funny. Um, they are... Uh, what is it called <laughs> when you have like potato sack over your head? They're just like, well, you know. You, yeah. Yeah, potato sack head. Potato and, sack head. And then they all, they all have nooses and they're tied to the tree. And you just see the other side and this tree getting cut by the saw. But you don't see anybody like cutting it. Yeah. Um, you just kind of see it moving at this point. But um, it's got this fun lever device. It does. Which is interesting. Yeah. And, and then the... Because the tree limb that is falling falls, it lets the other side of the tree go up and all these family members just start going up in the mm-hmm. air, little feet. And you're just thinking like, oh, fuck. Because it's really heavy already from the get-go. Yeah. Um, you, yeah. You watch four people get hanged. Yeah. Yep. That's and a, that's you a, watch them struggle until they slowly come to a stop. Oh, the name of the that home footage, It's what was it again? It's like... Fam- hanging out. Yeah. Family hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> I love his, his, all he's so the, punny with, I know, all the, with all the titles. Time. Uh-huh. Yeah, I loved love it. it. Um, but yeah, and, and then that's we get a title card after that. We so, do uh, instantly. It's called Sinister. Um, so it's super exciting. And um, you you also see someone toss the saw out, but you can't because that's how you can tell like what did cut it, but you mm-hmm. can't tell who tossed. Yeah, the Yeah, no, because yeah, you're left in the dark for this <clears throat> for not too long though, actually. No, 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 yeah, yeah. not too long. Um, I mean, because I will, it, you start, I kind of put those pieces together before we got to the kind of bigger reveal of, mm-hmm. you know, the footage, but um, it's it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have them then cutting to the family moving in um, yep. very much like all movies, like it's supposed to be like, oh yeah, new beginnings, you know. Now everything's going to be great. Yeah, exactly. No, it's yeah. not. <laughs> and he just like carry in this little box and she's like, oh, that's it. And he's like, this is very precious stuff. Yeah. It's like very fragile. It's from my office. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you wuss. Yeah. And <laughs> huge office, by the way. It is. Yeah. Yes. Like bigger than my whole house. Mm-hmm. Um, But the house is so fucking dark. And it, the whole entire movie. I'm also thinking, like, why do these people live? Like, like why Why doesn't he ever turn on a light? I know. A there were so many and moments there's so many, where and I there's was so like, turn on a fucking light, And dude. there's so many lamps. Yes. Did you? Uh-huh. I was watching with Robert, and there was, like, so many freaking lamps the entire movie. <laughs> and then yeah. none of them were utilized. I, I was. I was commenting on it, and I was like, motherfucker, turn on a stupid light. And then I realized I am 1,000% that person that, like, walks through my house in the dark. Mm-hmm. And I'll just, I'll 
go all the way downstairs and then I like rarely turn same, on lights. Same. Especially me when I'm getting ready for work early in the morning. Yeah. And that might be where that <clears throat> habit came from is from mm-hmm. having to work super early mornings and not wanting to wake anyone up. That. Yep. And also like light early in the morning when you're just waking up is so harsh. At yeah. least for me on my eyes they are like super fucking sensitive. So I just don't even turn them on. Yeah. I like you. I I kid you not. I'm usually using this like mm-hmm. just to get around. Yeah, I'll use my phone screen. Not mm-hmm. even the, the not flashlight. even the flashlight all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that um, as well. And so, um, they're moving in. We have um the cops show up at this point. Uh, we have one who we get to really get to know throughout the movie as deputy so and so. Deputy so and so um, holding the book. Um, is it the uh Kentucky Blood? I think uh, or that's it's another the, one. That's the one that he mentions later on as but I'm think wanting it, to get. Mm-hmm. a like autograph, autograph for one. but um yeah i don't remember exactly which copy he was holding here because he has a lot of books apparently by this point yeah. at least a few and so um then the sheriff comes and, sl- and is like seriously um because i guess they're really don't there for a fucking autograph, autograph. yeah because also he hates him <laughs> yeah because their agenda there isn't really necessarily to show that they like him he wants to be like stern and kind of put up this front of like you're not really welcome here because mm-hmm. we know what you write about and he's also kind of he he hasn't talked bad about cops but because of what his preacher has done and led to like the discovery and um of crimes and cases getting solved sorry um it's made the police look bad yeah. so he doesn't want that to happen to them yeah mm-hmm. and it's shown where they've slipped up where they didn't just general police like oversight and mm-hmm. so, and he picks up those little pieces and then solves the crime. So yeah, it, yeah, obviously it would. It's like somebody coming in and doing your job <clears throat> for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and right before he goes out to meet her, though, we get a little flash of Ashley. Is her name right? Yes, Ashley, the little red girl. Painting the wall, mm-hmm. and already like her watercolor is too watery, um, because all these paintings she's painting look hell fucking creepy. Yeah. And then we get this is where we get the conversation of the dad being like, okay, but what are the rules? No painting, like paint has to stay in the bedroom. In the bedroom, yeah. No painting outside of it, which is comes into play a little bit later. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of uh, foreshadowing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so um, that's all happening kind of interwoven at the same time. And then, like we said, he has that conversation with the cops. And um, then the cop, the sheriff, um, or I don't know if he's a sheriff, but he's like the chief. Or- uh, yeah, I think he said sheriff. Okay. So. And so he is talking to him. The wife is watching and she kind of is, you know, kind of, I'm sure getting like a vibe that like it's weird, like this conversation they're having. Mm-hmm. And then the, he points at the house and he's like, and I also find this in poor taste. Yeah, extremely bad taste. Mm-hmm. And he was, I mean, he was being savage. He was saying something about like, because he was like, well, I, whenever people tell me not to waste my time, it makes me think that they're wasting theirs or something. And, um, yeah, they says, kept like going back and forth. Yeah. And then he says, well, this could be just another waste of your time, just like your last two books. And it was like, oh, mm-hmm. damn, sir, this fucking savage. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So then as he's walking away, the wife comes up and is like, what? I saw him pointing at the house. Like what's going on? Yeah. And he's basically saying, no, like nothing. It's totally yeah. fine. And she was like, T- we didn't move a few houses down from a crime scene again, did we? And he was like, nope. Yeah. But at this point, we are we can already tell like he's moved into the crime scene. Yeah, we already know because it's shown that I think at this point too he goes to the backyard mm-hmm. and he looks at the tree that the family got hung. So we. So at this point, we, we already know. know. Mm-hmm. But clearly, his <clears throat> wife doesn't, which is no, not okay. And at this, uh, you can't do shit like that, and then not have your partner. No, in and on you it. know, it actually is kind of weird because I, I was thinking while watching the movie as well, like why why aren't they why isn't she more filled in on like yeah. what's going on um especially and she like made a little comment like i don't want to know but but no uh, you have to know no something. and also too especially if you don't want your children to know then you have to know so you know what you need to protect them from uh-huh. you know what i mean like there's no way to not know so and a lot of her like yeah i just felt like it was things that as a married couple i felt like that would have like been talked about <laughs> but yeah, i guess not it, Clearly in their marriage. Have been. Yeah. And I <clears throat> I mean, I understand that what he's doing is a little Because like even when they bought the house, she should have known when if they got it for a steal, well was been suspicious yeah. as like why the Just fuck like was Ryan it Reynolds so was. cheap? Why What's was the it, catch? Literally, why was this house so cheap? <laughs> yeah. Well, there was a crime of 
<laughs> violent <laughs> murder. Literally. Um, but we moved on. We're past that. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. It's kind of her, I feel like, being more, uh, in, what's the word? She also is ignoring, ignoring all of the yeah. problems because she's capable of it's mm-hmm. 2012 when yeah. this is happening. Mm-hmm. The Internet wasn't as big, but it was definitely still pretty she easy look to look up. shit up. Yeah. yeah, especially where they're moving to. Like she if she knows that he is writing stuff for I guess she just obviously was just like ignoring all of it. Yeah, yeah. she had she had blinders on. Mm-hmm. She didn't want to see none of it. And so, yeah, he ends up after that little situation with the uh police force, he goes into the attic of the house. Mm-hmm. And that's whenever he finds this box in there that isn't theirs. Um at this point cuz he's we can infer that he's moving the first box up there. Yeah, exactly. And so whenever he gets up there, he's like, mm, "What's that?" I didn't put that there. Yeah. And it's, it's labeled home movies. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh. And then when he lifts it up, right, there's a scorpion underneath it. Mm-hmm. And so, Ooh, I'm so afraid of scorpions. Yeah, it was just crawling around a black scorpion. I don't, I've never seen a scorpion. No. Me neither. I've seen one like in a tank mm. um, to have it in a shot. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. There's a place called Nacho Daddy in Vegas <laughs> and they have, they have scorpion shots. That's cool. It's terrifying. Yeah. But wait, what do you mean? Like it's live? I think so. No, I think we no. kill it. Okay, yeah. I don't what? know. Do you drink it? I've never done it. Is it like a little one? I, I don't know. Some of these were big. Really? Maybe they put the... They can't put the poison in see. it. No, but that I mean... That seems problematic. They... If I were to see one in real life, I'd probably be scared of it. Oh, yeah, I would. Because they seem very alien-like and creepy they and they <laughs> can like sting you right mm-hmm. and some of them are not all of them but some of them are venomous or poisonous uh, yeah i'm pretty sure some of them can kill you yeah yeah so and they got pinchers yeah. i don't want to get pinched uh, all of all of these things one time i got a hard pass hermit crab his name was finn this was like uh-huh. in high school and he pinched the fuck out of me <laughs> the like within the first 30 minutes that i got him i was in, in so the, you threw him at a wall and you oh, died so no the thing was is that <laughs> here's the thing is so we were <laughs> i got him from the mall you know from earthbound as one would back mm. in the day and i, I was in the bride in the car <clears throat> in the back seat my sister and her boyfriend were up front we were going home and i just i was i loved him so much already i wanted to take him out of the little thing so i was just like got him and i like put him on my hand and i was just like oh look at him and it was chill for a minute like it was all like okay he's good and then out of nowhere he just like oh right here in the middle oh. just Oh my god! Like pinching me, Ouch. pinching me so hard, and I am screaming in the back seat. <laughs> I am writhing with pain. He probably got motion I sickness, don't and now like, he's got more motion sickness. Yeah, and I honest, and he was probably freaking out. He was didn't know what was happening. We were in a bumpy car, maybe, and that's what happened. Set him off, and so yeah, he just pinched me, and I just didn't know what to do. And they, my sister was freaking out because he's just like, "Why are you screaming?" And I'm just like, "He's it hurts," and she's just like just stop screaming but i couldn't stop and so she had to pull over and so i'm literally there like on the side of the road kermit crab pinching me she's trying to look up like how to get it off of me (laughs) and and then i don't even remember i think they had we we got food on the way and so they had like an ice cold drink so they started putting like ice cold water on it to like try to let it let go of me and it did not work if anything it made it pinch even harder and so literally i just had to like let it pinch me forever because we got back in the car no until it decided it wanted to let go and then finally like let go and at that minute i just like took it off and put it in the the little thing and i never like touched him again (laughs) really no i just but i I mean i fed him and took care of him but i left him in the thing so i was like man and it even like it like broke skin i was bleeding because like how bad it pinched yeah it was for like a good five minutes but it felt like a lifetime it it did Mm -hmm. i felt like it hurts you for a lifetime. I could see the pain mm-hmm. still in your eyes. I'm traumatized. I literally remember every <laughs> moment of that. Um, and so, anyway, Zoe he found the he found the film rolls and killed the scorpion with the box. Yeah, by the way, mm-hmm. he just yeah. smashed them right dead. And yep. I, I feel like their exoskeletons like a little bit harder than that. But I, no, it just I don't know. Mush. Never it met one. Turned into mush. It sure mm-hmm. did. Um, but we see some mm-hmm. of those real clever real clever names like we were talking about earlier Mm -hmm. one of the film roles says family hanging out 11 yeah one says barbecue 79 Mm -hmm. stuff like that um and they date back pretty far Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so next we have our little family dinner. Um, and I think they're just uh, basically, it's kind of setting up more about how, just the tone of how mom doesn't want the kids knowing about anything that goes on. And essentially, and we'll get more here in a bit, um, but she just bas- wants to protect them because of things that have already happened in the past. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we get we get kind of introduced to Trevor mm-hmm. as and Ashley's there as well. We've already kind of met her though. Yeah. And he's like, I'm 12. Like he feels like he's old enough to know. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and he's being sarcastic, a little sassy with his mom. He is yeah. very little sassy pants. Mm-hmm. Um, I like his character a lot. Mm-hmm. He's funny. Um, and then also this mom, she's a pretty solid mom. The way she's handling everyone is like, let's take good a, for you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> good for you, mom. Good for you, mom. Okay. And now a word from our sponsors. From the host of the popular podcast, The Only One in the Room, Stash by Laura Cathcart Robbins is a propulsive and vivid memoir about the journey to sobriety and self-love amidst addiction, privilege, racism, and self-sabotage. Best-selling author Holly Whitaker calls it an irresistibly delicious story. And MacArthur Foundation fellow and best-selling author Kiese Lehman says Stash is emotionally riveting. Buy Stash by Laura Cathcart Robbins now wherever books are sold. And so we're getting like, she's a pretty solid mom. She's doing everything. And I was just referring to her as mom at this point because I couldn't remember her name. Mm -hmm. But then I feel like we kind of get that again, really solidified. Ellison is his name. Tracy is hers. I don't even have that solidified for me for the Tracy part. Ellison, I got. But yeah. Um, But it's basically just giving more exposition of just like the family dynamics and how they're working right now. And what's basically not working. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because you can already tell it's just a little dysfunctional just Tensions because they're a little high because well, and also from our perspective as the viewer, we already know more information than she knows. Yeah. And so you already know, like this is not going to be good. No, because you never leave your wife in the dark and That's we already dumb fucking idea. And of course it's a movie. So she's going to find out at some point and it's yeah. going to be someone It's going to be a big thing. So, yeah. And, and it does end up being a big thing. Um, it really does. <laughs> and so we have them, I think. Um, she's going to bed. Yeah, that's right. They're talking about it even more yeah, by themselves. Because he comes in. She's like, you didn't brush your teeth. And he's like, yeah, mm-hmm. well, I'm going to I'm gonna finish setting up my office a bit and stuff yeah. like that. And she's talking about like how she just wants to see him enjoy his work again. And she also delivers a pretty savage line of. She was like, Kentucky blood was 10 years ago. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, okay. And she said, so what if that was your 15 minutes? And it was like, oh, yeah. damn. Saying like, he's peaked. Yeah. You peaked, son. <clears throat> Time to sit down. Kind of like a hard truth. Yeah, for but, real. Because, it, mm-hmm. I mean, 10 years ago, he's been chasing that high ever since and has been yeah. unsuccessful. And I'm sure, well, and there's something about when you're chasing a high like that, you're not going to get it because you're too focused on getting that high that nothing natural can flourish from it mm-hmm. to achieve what you achieved in the first place, you know? Yeah. And also, I think also, I don't even think she, yeah, yeah, it was pretty savage. But, it, and you know, it's coming from a place, I, I see her perspective as well, though, because she's not trying to be, like, a bitch about it. She's no, just she's just like, tired of having her family uprooted constantly exactly. for little to no return. And she's just like, it's time to, like, shift, shift your priorities a little bit. And seeing how stressful it is on mm-hmm, him mm-hmm. and stuff, and, you know... That He's chasing that high so much that it's no longer, like, enjoyable. And his focus isn't on the marriage mm-hmm. or his children. Mm-mm. She says, like, you know, if you blink you're going to miss all of these super important years with your kids Mm -hmm. kind of thing. And she says if stuff starts to go sour, she's taking the kids back home to go to her sister's. Yep. Um, And I I was honestly remarkably like shocked. You can feel she meant that. Yeah. 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 And I was shocked with how easily he was like, okay. Yeah. And he says things aren't going to go sour, but still there was like no fight at all, which was, yeah, I was kind of like, okay. I mean, you can tell things had to have been pretty bad beforehand for her to be like, I'm not putting up with anything. Like if one little goes off, I'm out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not even three strikes. Yeah. 
So at this point, um, we're setting up his office. Mm -hmm, exactly. And he's putting on laying out all of his, um, what, what do you call of this? Like, all a, of his, like a detective know, work type of yeah, room all the situation. pictures, mm -hmm. the maps with the strings, tying everything together. Yes. Just, very much you know, that. the always sunny picture. It's that coming yeah. to life. And he's marking up things. He's, we see the picture of the attic mm -hmm. and it's empty. And then he puts that little box there and a little sticky note. And he's like, who put you here? Where did the movies come from? Yeah. And then uh, like, and then he's like, you know, circling a picture of the kid, like Stephanie. And he's like, where are you? Because he's trying to figure out this mystery of a disappearing kid and who murdered this family. Exactly. Um, he's looking at a map and all the dead people all um, in the photos, what are they called? The crime photos yeah. of the scenes? The yeah. Crime, mm -hmm. crime scene photos. Yes. And then he's starting, he's like, okay, well, I have to watch these films that I yeah. found because, you know, this could be my first hint. Mm -hmm. And they very much are. And also his like kind of unraveling. But yeah, just a little <laughs> bit. Um. <laughs> and he's hanging up the sheet and this, this motherfucker, I put, I know that this boy did not just put thumbtacks into the fucking wood. Mm hmm. I don't know much about anything. Sheets. Is that not going to hold? Well, it's just don't fuck up your wood like that. Because oh, then if well, you're like forcing things in and then it could split, it was like a finished wood. I don't know. I don't Is that what you not do? How would you do that with wood then? Like putty? I don't know. Like a sticky I just tack? wouldn't hang it there. Sticky... I'd hang it somewhere else. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that didn't. Because it was just a trim. Yeah. So he could have hung it like somewhere right below. Mm. I was like, what, what are you doing? Yeah. Just get you a little toothpaste, fill in your drywall is fine. I know. Meanwhile, I put like holes in the walls. <laughs> but it's just like sheetrock. It ain't nothing special. Yeah, no. That's, mm -mm. E that's easy to fix. Because mm -hmm. you can just like fill it in. People but just the wood, you, you can't mm -hmm. fix that as easily. So that's why I was upset. Anyways. It's a nice house. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cute. Not as nice house. as the house in the end, but no, yeah. No, I know. Whenever whenever they moved back to their house, I was like, damn. Now I see why that little girl didn't want to leave. Like, I was that house thinking the exact nice same thing. She probably had like five different rooms. Yeah. It's huge. So fucking For all nice. of them. Yeah. Too big. No wonder he couldn't afford it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was like a fucking mansion. Yeah. I was like, damn, y'all rich, rich. Mm -hmm. Kentucky blood must have done good. Yeah. He went to the Kentucky Derby, too. Mm -hmm. bet, bet on some horses. Who knows? And so we are watching the hanging, um, the family hanging out. And we get to see the video essentially that we saw at the beginning, mm -hmm. just a little bit longer. We get um, some stuff at the beginning with mm -hmm. the family just hanging, um, like actually Literally hanging, hanging out. out yeah. Bar like a barbecue hanging. situation, I guess, ish. Yeah, they're not just really enjoying just, themselves in the backyard. Yeah, like it's, playing a football. They're being tossing. filmed from afar, like from behind little branches and mm -hmm. stuff. Bushes, and yeah. So it's just kind of like, okay. And so he's, this is where he's writing, like, who made this film, mm -hmm. basically. And he was like, where are you, Stephanie, and stuff. And um, we're going through and we're also kind of asking the same questions. Because you're seeing at any given point, you're seeing at least, there's not one person that's solely missing from the film. Yeah. Like, Stephanie's still in the footage. Mm -hmm. So... So it's like, who's recording them? Yeah. You know, if it's not any of these people. Because also, like, but, why would you trust a child to make mm -hmm. your home videos? Yeah. Because at this point, you're also still just thinking he's these, these children were abducted. These are innocent. It's an innocent, innocent child. Yeah. Um. Well, at least in this case or this one, because he's still not until he watches the next one knows that there are actual other instances where the same kind of situation has happened. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I think right after this, he's go he goes outside, right? Because he wants he goes to look at that tree again. Um, yeah, and but in the I, dark. <laughs> also, why I was like, why is no one cutting the branch down? Oh yeah, it's just that still there. Rather morbid mm -hmm. to to just still that, leave the branch that's hanging there. Yeah, mm -hmm. the branch that so because they had cut the little well. Okay, because the the branch got cut. Yeah, and so that um, part it was that was still just hanging, hanging off. There. Yeah. They just didn't finish taking it down. And that was the <laughs> lever that was used to actually hang the family. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe just like get rid of that tree. All together. All together. It just seems like bad juju would be tied to back to that tree. Yeah, exactly. But no, yeah, it was just left like that. They just and left the fucking branch. I was like, okay, that's a little weird, but and whatever. He's out there looking at it. And I guess that at that point he goes back inside, but he's hearing noises. Yeah, he hears like. Some, creeps and mm -hmm. creakings from the other side of the house so you're so already investigating you're already getting this like creepy paranormal type of vibe because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it seems like it's like a ghost stirring about it or sounds something. like the house is like breathing mm -hmm. almost 
and um, he's kind of snooping around the house and he gets to the um, uh, like washer and dryer machine room. And that's whenever you a utility room and he that we see Ashley and it's kind of like your first almost jump scare. Yeah, because you saw uh-huh. a shadow move past him earlier. So you're like, mm-hmm. oh, fuck, like someone, someone, someone else is in the house. Yeah, this is scary. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, he the just- suspense is, is really high, especially because of how dark it is. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't turn on any lights. Yes, he doesn't. He's just <laughs> walking through fucking dark <laughs> it's as hell. So dark, yes. I, I, see, now, if I'm scared, I'm turning on the lights. Mm-hmm. Like, if I was investigating something, every fucking light would yeah, be flipped on. Yeah, that just makes on. more sense. Not yeah. investigating in the dark. Mm-hmm. You, can't, well, you can't see anything. I was thinking about it because then I was just trying to think to myself, mm-hmm. would that be the better idea? Because then you can see or is it bad? But then because everything then can see you. Everything can see you. Yeah. yeah. Right. But I don't know. I'd still rather have the lights on because I'd rather want to see then because then something could still see you anyways but you can't see them yeah exactly so and we'll just level the playing field on all sides it's okay i'll take my chances yeah mm-hmm. if you're all right, just mind, start stabbing in the dark <laughs> just <laughs> going off and that's how you kill the family dog <laughs> harry yep that's what happens <laughs> and so um outside he starts oh yeah whenever we get ashley she's just like i can't um find find the bathroom bathroom. yeah so he points her in the right direction um gets her back to her room and i think they they start talking a little more right for like a quick second yeah he says Mm -hmm. she's like are you gonna write a good book so we can go back home soon and now like watching it back you're like oh this makes more sense why she really wants to go back home because whenever the first interaction of her painting the wall and stuff she said like oh yeah Daddy, like, I, I don't like it here. I didn't want to move. You wanted to move. I mm-hmm. want to go back home kind of thing. Yeah. And so whenever she brings it up here, she does seem a little more serene mm-hmm. and um, well, at peace with they, her questioning. They struck, they struck that deal. Remember, she was like, if you, if you, if you write it, wait, no. If she, if she doesn't like it within a year there, they can move back. Yeah. Essentially. But she has to really try to like it. Within that year. Or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then so now and she's basically saying, like, are you going to write like, are you going to write a really good book and stuff? Mm-hmm. And he says, yeah, I'm going to write the best book that anyone's ever read. And it's like, oh, OK, sure you are. Mm-hmm. Um, Little does he know. Yeah, exactly. But then he goes back. After for he puts more. her back to bed, yeah, he goes back for more. And so we get some more. Um, yeah. Super 8 film footage yep. of uh, this one is the car. Oh, what, what's yes. the name for this one? Uh, this is Barbecue. Barbecue. 89. Yes. 89. Mm-hmm. Um, which we starts up with the cute little family. They're like by a little lake or yep. a pond and they're like doing some fishing. Fishing. Hanging out, having, having a little barbecue. Um, but little do they know that they, they are the are barbecue. barbecue. Yes. <laughs> and we have... The it, music that I was love, playing here was so fucking creepy. Oh, I so liked it. the music actually is um, by... Do 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 mm-hmm. over and it's basically it's, it's called the song is called silence teaches you how to sing and it is a very long song it is um it's coming up my phone is going so slow for some reason um because robert showed it to me but it's very long um it is like hmm 24 minutes long oh damn when yeah. you were saying long i was thinking like ah eight minutes no it, it's 24 <laughs> minutes long and the funny thing is is that and all of the not all of them sorry but like i think well, there's five of them like mm. three out of the five of them this song because it's along like different parts of it are used are in used the, in this uh, in the videos yeah because it's got that like creepyish tone to uh, it i'm excited i want to mm-hmm. listen through i'll it. send it to you yeah, or please i'll send do. it to you mm-hmm. because i really enjoyed a lot of the soundtrack for this film so mm-hmm. much there was one at the end to, um, the, I forget mm-hmm. exactly which one, but the music was so fucking kind of like, it just almost sounded like a tape, like looping. The oh, mu- it was this one. Yeah. The music was done by Christopher Young. I think, I think it was that song awesome. though. Oh, oh, that, that you were one? just talking yeah, yeah. about. Yeah. Cause it, it is here. It was at this scene where it, it kind of just sounded like a tape skipping yeah. almost. It's this song. It's so long. There's so many parts and there's so many parts of it as well. It sounds like different at different parts. Um, and the, the dude who did the music for this movie also did the music for like the original Hellraiser. Oh, nice. And urban legend, the grudge, um, oh, drag yeah. me, drag me to hell, um, pet cemetery, a lot of movies actually. Wow. Oh, Ghost Rider, Spider Man 3, Swordfish. Mm. 
Yeah, he's been nominated for Golden Globes. Spider Man Three. Spider Man Three. Literally. <laughs> uh-huh. The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Nice. Mm-hmm. Damn, Strong. there's some big, big names in there. Yeah. We like it. Anyways, the music phenomenal here. And we're seeing after the happy little go lucky shots of this family fishing and having a nice day out, um, we then switch to a car that's chained up. And when we look inside the windows, we can see a family that's unconscious inside with um, like tape over their mouths and stuff. And then we just watch it. Get set on fire. Go up in flames. Uh It's our barbecue. It's a pretty, pretty cruel, Mm -hmm. cruel way to go. Um, Yeah, they essentially just get burned up up in there. And um, we on the hood of the car, you can kind of see this symbol um, as well that was painted on like red plate or blood i guess and yeah. blood essentially i could only assume and um at that point after watching that one he then kind of like kind of comes out of that tr- trance of watching the film and then is just like re- realizing the gravity of what he's he just seeing. witnessed yeah. people get murdered exactly and so he has the idea of calling the cops but when he's calling them he's walking around in his office and he comes to Kentucky blue or blood in front of him. Kentucky bluegrass, Kentucky blood. (laughs) And he is just remembering that like he can, he's basically at this point questioning, like, do I want to get the police involved? Cause like I can solve this myself. Like this is for my book. They've already don't have good footing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Assholes to me from the start. Mm -hmm. Why, why would I want to include them in this? But also, uh, but he also should've. you witness people getting murdered. So that's probably stuff that you should have turned into yeah. police authorities. Um, I said, maybe not a good idea to keep them in the dark. But his mm-hmm. whole thought process of keeping people in the dark is also just not a good idea. Yeah, keeping your wife in the dark, him. police in the dark. Bad, bad, bad. Yeah. And that's that's a lot to have to carry on yourself. Mm-hmm. No I wonder. don't want to do that. And you can definitely tell the toll that it takes on him as well. Yeah. Throughout the film. And so... Um, he hangs up, of course, after the operator is like, hello, what's your emergency? Hello, is anybody there? And then uh, that's whenever I think he's even about to start another film. But before he can even get to that, I think he hears something. Mm-hmm. Because this is all happening in the same night. It's still the same night, know, you guys. Which is fucking wild. It's, yeah. And then he and, <laughs> ends up yeah, going to the hallway. Pool party. Yeah. 66. I yeah. couldn't tell if it said 86 or 66. It was 66, it's 66 for sure. But yeah, he hears a thud and like doors creaking. And yeah, he goes into the hallway and this is fucking wild, this scene. Yeah, oh my gosh. Whenever I first saw this movie, it really scared the crap out of me. Um, yeah. He's going, walking down the hallway and he sees that there's a box at the end of the hallway. And there's some, the one light that they have on. Yeah. Literally. And, and it's like a pantry. I don't know. Some like a it's sun like room. Like a mud room Yeah, or mud room. And so um, there's a box there and it starts moving and he's like, what the heck? He kind of backs up away from it. And then his son starts coming out of it. But like. A tr- Upside like a, down. Like a, one of those trapeze artists or whatever. People who like bend backwards. Oh, uh, like a contortionist? Contortionist. There yeah. you go. Yes. He basically, it's almost as if he's coming out of this box in a back bend. Mm-hmm. His, like levitating out. Yeah. Almost. Because mm-hmm. his, he's got his, you know, stomach and chest turned towards the sky and his arms are like coming out of over his Some head. Some intense yoga. Yeah. And he's just like, ah! Screaming at the top screaming. of his lungs. And it looks like his eyes were even like rolling back a little bit. Yeah, probably they were because he was yeah. sleeping. And mm-hmm. then the just gravity and the weight of how his body was moving in that situation. But just ugh, how his body even like moved that way. Man, but I know, man, if that was my kid, I would have been like, what the, f-? like, yeah. like, what are you doing? I, but I yeah, but they the do, out. But they do have, but the <laughs> thing is that they... Else. He he grabs him. He runs outside to the front yard and like under the moonlight and under the light of the streetlight, I guess. And he's, he's like, like to allow stars. him to wet, you know, wake up slowly because he's having like a night terror. Yeah. And apparently they have, you know, uh, experience in the past with him doing this before. Yeah, and he's got a history the, of it. the mom was just like, I thought that was over. I thought he got over this. And the dad's like, well, apparently not. You know, I couldn't believe he brought them out there. I said, you brought him outside just to wake all the fucking neighbors up. Because <laughs> he was still screaming. Come on. Yeah. He yeah. was screaming bloody murder. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no. <laughs> yeah i would not a you already know this town hates you yeah B, that's like, great yeah I was, no one mm. is a fan of being woken up in the middle of the night to screams yeah no so but yeah granted in the moment he's just like those poor neighbors to, are you're probably to, traumatized anyways mm-hmm. thinking like knowing murdered oh, their People whole friends house, got murdered yeah. right next door to them i don't know but you're supposed to wake up someone who is sleeping 
sleepwalking or like or not sleepwalking but having a nightmare like gently like or whatever but oh yeah who knows i don't know yeah because otherwise i mean mm, you can fight that was pretty intense though and so we have them the next morning kind of going over what happened the night before um, and talking about how he's had these night terrors in the so past. So casually. Yeah. He's like, I was in a box. And he's yeah. like, you were in a box. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, what? Yeah. And even this. <laughs> this was a really the, crazy scene that just happened the, and y'all are making light of it. Mm-hmm. Well, because then dad brings it. up, well, it's like, it, it's not like it wouldn't be the first time like something weird has happened. Like, because we found you peeing in the dryer that one time or something <laughs> oh. like that. There was, he was like, yeah, we're not going to talk about the dryer. And then he, the, the mom was like, when he was peeing in the dryer, <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure one And then Ashley even that. brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, in the dryer? No, it was a dishwasher. Oh, okay. Um, I don't remember if, I meant to like call my brother and ask, but there was this one time when I, I think I have a whole like note Like a video of footage? Yes. A video of me <laughs> peeing in the dishwasher. No. It's just was um, this like a child thing, like a childhood thing, or like yeah, this happened like was, two weeks ago? I don't ago. remember if it was my no. This was definitely a childhood thing. Okay. I didn't um, pee. I, didn't, I almost said poop. <laughs> then walk that would be good. Um, but <laughs> it was, I it was either myself or my brothers. Mm-hmm. One of us at one point. We're sleepwalking and like sleeping, and then one of us tried to pee in the dishwasher. That feels like a very boy type of thing because boys like kind of pee everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I sh- I just feel like I remember talking about it once, and then they got mad at me for blaming it on them, mm-hmm. and they were like, "That was you." And, but I feel and, like that's also remember. a very sibling thing to do. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. I have no clue. Anyways, someone in my family, yeah, has peed in a dishwasher. Well, I think or at least tried to. We've all probably peed in a peed in a place where we probably shouldn't have once in our life. I think my mom, mom like peed on a nightstand or something too once. <laughs> <laughs> of all places, like yeah. in sleep or just like yeah, in I like, think she I think she was really hungover or uh, something as yeah, and I young mean, yeah, and mm-hmm. maybe it wasn't that I don't know. I remember she told me it was for what's your excuse, mm. and so she had told me about it and uh, yeah, wild times. Anyways, um, but he peed in the dryer, I guess. Yeah. And so they're talking about that. Then they're eating their breakfast and they all go uh, essentially leaving dad to work at home. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's whenever he starts going over the pool party video and he can actually watch it this time. And after we see the family kind of hanging out. Having a nice pool day. Pool day. um, We then see them tied to their... uh, what pool, are those chairs. pool chairs mm-hmm. and then and they're clearly they weighted they got like slint, cinder, cinder blocks, blocks. Yeah. yeah and then they throw get well pulled into the water by these ropes and essentially they all drowned mm-hmm. and um, which okay i'm sorry mm-hmm. <laughs> going back to the ending there and like that boy was the small like one of the smallest boys yeah and he's lifting he's pulling these cinder blocks in mm-hmm. with but the power the of evil people. but the power of evil the power of they they were literally getting help from a deity, so That's I true. don't think. I mean, that I do feel yeah. They were they weren't willingly killing their family. Mm-hmm. They were possessed, but. Mm-hmm. And when you do get possessed, you do get incredible strength. Everybody knows that. That's true. It comes with the like territory. It's Everybody. Like, you get powers. You get like really great strength. You're kind of like in and vulnerable. You're kind of you can invul- float. And and honestly, you are kind of what's the word like in um uh, invincible in a sense because when you're possessed. You're well, when you're possessed, <laughs> well, no, when you're possessed, you're like in all the movies you've seen when they're going through even an exorcism, you are bending, you are breaking, you are getting your bones like bent into all kinds of ways. So obviously, like true. you're like, either rubber or you're invincible the, because whenever they do end up getting saved, like there's nothing wrong with them. They've healed. They're the fine. beginning of the conjuring three. The devil made me do mm-hmm. it. That little boy was all types of ways. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so his body was broken. Yeah. And that normally would kill a person, you yes. know? So, yeah. Um, so there's a plus side to being possessed. Just always remember that, you guys. You can... Silver lining to everything. Almost jump out of a building and be okay. Mm-hmm. Please don't. 
to the consumption of public buildings. <laughs> oh my God, that is not advised. No. We do not advise, <laughs> and neither do our affiliates. On and Bubay's we podcast, they said I could jump out of a building and was possessed and like totally fly. <laughs> <laughs> What's that Key and Peele sketch that you can fly? I've never seen get that. Get on your friend's know. back. Get on well, the not highway that and you can fly. I'll have to watch that. Send it to get me. Get on top of your roof. <laughs> it's so funny. Key and Peele are funny. I love them. Um, and so um, that's whenever <laughs> he's sees um he he ends up fr- freezing the frame of the video because at one point he sees like this ghoulish man t- thing standing in the water one perfect name for him. in in the in the film <laughs> in the in the in the pool yeah yeah i couldn't tell if it was his reflection or if he was just legitimately standing in there yeah it, it was um, the way it looked it was pretty weird the dimensions of yeah it, whatever it was odd yeah. but we we get our first look at Bagul. Yes, the killer. Mr. Boogie. Mr. Boogie at this point. For easy terms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like the name Bagul, though. Bagul. And back in the day, he used to have a Twitter. I don't know if he still has a Twitter. I haven't kept up. But and it uh, was just he would just post like funny stuff. I love that. Mm-hmm. It's really a fun little mask. Mm-hmm. Costume is like some cheesecloth. Oh, and he scared me so much back in the day. I was yeah, so he's scared fucking terrifying. Of him. Gave me like night terrors, honestly. But if watch now watching it to today and stuff, there were a few moments like the ending scene, the very last minute whenever his head goes No, that scared me back in the day. Still oh, scared me the other I'm night. Fucking it still scared me the other night. I was like probably because <laughs> I was anticipating it, but I was just like, no, I know I'm gonna see his face. I don't know why his face truly does like I, there are so many, eyelids, there are there. so many other scarier things that I've seen in movies for some reason, but him for that face for some reason because it's so simple. Uh, I feel like it's, it's the whole idea with the strangers and potato so sack much. man. Like, like it's, it's a very like thinking about plausible it. thing. I don't even like thinking about it. Okay, good thing we're talking about this I know. film. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have yeah. nightmares tonight. Robert sometimes doesn't even like think that we should. He's like, I'll want to pick a movie and it'll be close to bedtime. He's like, you, we're not watching that. We're not watching a scary movie right now because you're going to have a nightmare. I already Aww. know you're going to have a nightmare. I don't have nightmares. I'm, I, I'm just things. very susceptible. Like, well, just because every anything that I watch like just plays out in my dreams. Yeah. But when I have nightmares, I do like, I like fight. I like oh, start yeah. No, I do. I and do I just, well. Or I yell. Uh huh. I never know when I have nightmares until Andrew the next morning is <laughs> like, you okay? Like, I had to like hold you for like 30 minutes last night. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Fighting for your life. And he was um, like, yeah, you're really upset. <laughs> and so as he's, as he's looking at Bagul in this film, um, and he's like, he has to get out from his seat and go take a look closer at the sheet, you know, where it's getting projected on. Oh, um, that, that part was creepy. The what? Huh. When he was so close to the screen. Oh, yeah. And like with his head right next to him, I was like, oh, no, yeah. he's going to move. I know. He's gonna move. I was scared there. You were waiting for it. Yeah, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Um, but at that point, he doesn't move, right? The, 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 the film the, burns the up. Film burns up mm-hmm. Yeah, because you're waiting but it for was it to still jump. So scary. Yeah, it does happen later, though, that kind of scene. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His head, his head moves in the film and stuff, but it was... Ugh. Yeah. Was so, and just knowing that he can move through the film mm-hmm. and go to and from the Dimensions, film. Star Wars. So you know world. that he was probably just sitting there watching, mm-hmm. but from the corner of his eye, just like kind of fucking with him, like not moving yet. Yeah. Oh, that's so much creepy. And creepier then knowing that like he's I feel there what because and not acting we know the way that he works as well as his tactic of like freaking the people out it, mm-hmm. to, it, all the way to the limit of like having to to the next place so we have um the projector <laughs> catching on fire so he then and this is kind of funny to me but maybe not maybe it's, i guess i learned stuff pretty quick from youtube so that makes sense but oh how he's a master film splicer literally yeah. because he literally <laughs> googles something off of like the most how like how to the, edit super eight and film. like <laughs> clicks the first link like not even goes through all of them clicks the first one and then like it's like this really old website and then like automatically just knows how to and work he's film and <laughs> he's doing all the splicing and putting it together and, and i'm like digitizing okay. it yeah yeah i was like but you know you know who are we he maybe he has experience in doing that i, I mean i have i have changed many of like that would have been parts you know via youtube this so. where this could have been like one easy plot hole fix for this would have just been explaining that 
as a minor next to his like writing and criminal whatever he's thing. got he's he a had, journalist and he's got a film degree exactly yeah journalism or, and film or he's done something in film like mm-hmm. to where it would make this believable because it really to me it was kind of laughable because i was like okay all of a sudden he's a really big professional because it looked like it was a whole I know, process yeah because he was cutting it just exactly mm-hmm. and like putting it in that little thing that like compressed it together mm-hmm. and was taking it all all the little frames apart like i was like okay um but anyways uh, homeboy knows what he, he's doing he fixed it all yeah and um then the mom comes home yelling at trevor um and oh, yeah, she's yeah. really pissed off because he got uh, in trouble at school because he drew <laughs> on like the wipey dry erase board a family hanging in a tree with a permanent marker with a permanent marker yeah and so that's whenever like, yo boy not a great way to start your first day Mm-mm. like you just heard about that so you're gonna act out that way yeah it's uh, kind of a lot but we who are we to th- th- i'm sure their family he's a 12 year old and their family has gone through a lot you know um yeah, I'm, I feel mm-hmm. like it's it's a lot of the time whenever I just make jokes about myself. Um, so that way when other people make jokes about me, I don't feel as bad mm-hmm. because I've already made them myself. Maybe he was trying to make light of it, make yeah, a joke out of it. I yeah. think I feel like he probably was. He was like, these motherfuckers are going to pin me as this weirdo who lives in the murder house or whatever. Well, he yeah. didn't even know it was the murder house. So. And they told him, yeah. Yeah. And, and so, so then he was like, I'm going to beat them to the punch. Yeah. Draw it on the rice, rice board, whiteboard. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then essentially um that's whenever um she what is happening? Oh yeah, she because that's whenever he says, "Well, I already found out at school or something like that." And then she's really pissed off and she goes to the kitchen and starts yelling at Ellison. Mm-hmm. Um because that's whenever she's like, um, "Why didn't you tell me?" And he's like, "Well, you asked if we moved in." Is this right? The part where no, not even she no. doesn't know. Not yet, even no. yet. No. Yeah. Yeah. She's just basically getting upset, and he's he's taking the mom's side and stuff because they're just she doesn't know that it was in this house yet. That's that was right. Just, yeah. Just knows what and how, how they died. Happened. That's yes, right. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And um and this I was like he needs to tell her. Yeah. And they're starting to get real salty with one another, but then basically. I guess they put a nice little bow on it Mm -hmm. and he goes away to go watch the next film. And, um, as we're watching this one, we see a, it's the sleepy time murder, right? Yeah. Sleepy time. Um, we see a symbol on the wall. Mm -hmm. Um, he notices that, um, we're going upstairs. Very, mm -hmm. um, it's nighttime Mm -hmm, We're mm -hmm. it's a very first person POV. We've got all of these happening at night, right? All the murders that happen at night. Oh, never mind. Not the family hanging. That looked like, that looked like the strangers right at mm-hmm. the sun rose. Mm-hmm. Oh, strangers so good. Yeah. Let's cover it again. <laughs> Re- recover. <laughs> reboot. Um, and so we a reboot. A reboot. A reboot. That's funny. I like that. That's cute. Everyone's going to be like, these bitches are dumb. <laughs> um, I love us. <laughs> And so he sees the symbol on the wall. And I think at this point he does notice that it was the same symbol that was like on the hood of the car. Yeah. He's starting to put some mm-hmm. little bits together. He's like, Ooh. he's a smart man. Yeah. And that's whenever he notices, um, he like clicks on a little like zoom in and notices that one of the things says like St. Louis school of something. I don't know. So he, he Googles and he types in like St. Louis murders and whatever and comes up with footage. Of, and we like, see the whole mm-hmm. murders and stuff beforehand too. That's true. Yeah. And that's of course I liked, I liked they the were way getting cut in the neck, slice button throat yeah. yeah and i liked the way that we didn't see the throats getting slit mm-hmm. um other than through his glasses yeah it was a reflection of the screen playing and i really liked that i thought it was tasteful and then for the children or the child i think it was mm-hmm. singular getting their throat slit um it was just merely in the background mm-hmm. and it was just kind of a like silhouette you couldn't really tell it was very blurred out yeah and i thought th- i thought that was really good People, i just liked it yeah there's your limitations with child violence. Yes. But um, yes, he saw with Sleepy Time 98, he mm-hmm. saw the St. Louis thing. Child, yeah, child something. It said, I thought we were going to be in like an orphanage or something. Yeah. And then it ended up being like the Miller family murders. Yeah. And I was like, oh. And uh, which, you know, same situation, had a family murdered and, their one ch- and then one of the childs is abducted or mm-hmm. missing um and they want to you know basically like if you have any information or leads please call the police so we can find out the, who killed these people and find Where the abducted the child is. yes yeah. exactly um and so he hears something upstairs at this point yeah and all the lights the lights turn him, off yeah which is yeah. terrifying mm-hmm. 
And so and at this point, he can't turn on the light. No, yeah, true. Because this power is legitimately gone out. Um, mm-hmm. And he's hearing the creaking, and he goes to investigate. Mm-hmm. Um, and while he's looking, he doesn't seem to, like, find anything. But then no. he hears this giant, like, loud dump. Yeah. From upstairs. In or the, the attic. Because attic. Yes. this is a single-story home, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so it's the attic, and he goes up. And he hears footsteps running too, right? Yeah, he hears something. Yeah. Yes, because throughout like, the whole time, there's like faintly little. Oh, because that's why they even bring up like snakes don't have feet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so he hears he hears a thump and then. And he thinks someone's in the house at yeah. this point. Footsteps. Um, and then he hears something upstairs. So that's whenever he pulls the ladder down. And he grabs a knife. And he goes upstairs. Yes, but as he's going upstairs, that's whenever he um, is walking up there and he sees something moving underneath the lid. Mm-hmm. Um, and he picks up the lid and it's a snake. And and was there wood covering the entryway? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something like, cause he had pulled it down and then, yeah, there was wood covering mm-hmm. the It's attic. like a lid. Mm-hmm. But that's so weird. It's like a little me. door that flips open. Normally that's not how those work. Normally you just pull the door down. And it's just open. Yeah. And you just crawl in. And but for it. there to be something he had to then lift off of mm-hmm. it as well. So seemed very odd to me, mm-hmm. but I don't know. And, Ugh, God, I can't believe he went up there without. Yeah. I would have tried to fix the power first. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Well, and so he, the snake ends up going away, uh, slithering away, which is when he never checks again for the snake. I'm like, there's a snake in this house somewhere. Oh, but yeah. um, the oh. he <gasps> then gets the lid, the the lid, the box lid, and then we look see over that it's got like pictures drawn all over mm-hmm. it by kids of the murders that he's been watching on all these movies but with the inclusion of a mr boogie now mr. Boogie. um looking uh, kind of like on as a bystander yeah um through he's all of these murders onlooker. onlooker yeah he likes to watch and so we have um him then like taking three steps and ends up mm-hmm. falling through the yeah. ceiling um and all the way to the to the um the hallway right mm-hmm. yeah because he he kind of catches himself at first and then then he eventually oh, just like right. is, he falls realizes through. he can't get himself well up we do through, see so later and he falls through mm-hmm. the little hands oh yes yeah mm-hmm. so i don't know if they were trying to help him or push him down honestly but i probably feel like push him down push him down i yeah. feel like at this point they're they were loving gone. it yeah yeah and so um also too a lot of times he's like up at night making noises I don't understand how these family is sleeping through all of this, especially when he falls through the fucking roof. I know. Yeah. I was wondering how his wife didn't come out faster. And then later on, whenever the film drops from the attic and he goes to, he goes to burn it. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how she wasn't awake um, right then. Yeah. Until like probably 15 minutes later. Well, what we see anyways, I don't know. I I, I would like like to think that. Yeah. I don't know. I am a pretty heavy sleeper until it comes like if I've just first fallen asleep, I'm like pretty dead to the world. Yeah. But then later on, you know, little things can wake me pretty easily. Mm-hmm. And so I'd like to think that if I heard like loud crashing and humans falling down stairs and shit, I would yeah. wake up like, and, and no, I know I would. The kittens have fucking knocked shit over in this, my sleep before. I would wake up. And yeah. then I'm like, oh. I mean, I'm a pretty heavy sleeper, but not that heavy. No. And so we have the paramedics now here. He's getting his, um, leg wrapped up, wrapped up right mm-hmm. or something wrapped up and then we have deputy um so and so talking to him um and he's very enamored with him or which we saw earlier he the way he like you know talks to him and stuff yeah but he is you know talking about what had happened with you know going upstairs he's like you know uh, he th- he tells him that he thought it was an intruder, but he's like, no, it's probably squirrels. And he's like, you know, he said, I saw, a, I saw a snake up there and he was like, well, snakes, snakes don't, don't have feet. feet. Yeah. And at this point I couldn't tell if he was trying to be sarcastic or if he was just like really trying to be, I think he's being wholeheartedly serious. I think yeah. he was too. Yeah. That's his character. And, uh, and then he was like, okay, well, um, and then he's like, well, I did see a scorpion as well. Mm-hmm. And then he said something about the squirrels and he was like, well, they do have feet. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I don't think that was what I heard, though. Yeah. And then Ethan or Ellison is just like, well, I'm not a squirrel professional or something like that. Yeah. But he's just like, well, maybe I should get an exterminator out here, you know, whatever. And he's trying to dismiss deputy so-and-so. But that's whenever he's like, you know, 
I would really love if we had um, he got, if I could get an autograph. I left my book at home, but if you had a copy, that'd be great. He's like, and they're talking plenty. more and more, and that's whenever Deputy So and So is like, and this is how we get his name, Deputy So and So and So, because he's like at the you know at the end of every book at the acknowledgments, you think well this one cop who helps you put their dutiful efforts, you, you know, say like Deputy So and So, yeah, and so and then the he's course like, I could be that I could be your Deputy So and So, <laughs> and Ellison wastes no time on jumping on that and letting him know like. Like, all right, this is what I need from you. And he lets them know about their murders because he wants information on them, essentially. Um, and the way that was delivered there as well almost seemed a little bit like I couldn't tell if he was just like, OK, yeah, whatever. I'll give you this. But mm-hmm. I don't know. He seemed a little he ju- he seemed eager, but then also like, just shut up. Uh, Deputy so and so? No, uh, Ellison. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I can definitely feel that as well. Um, and so then after that, we get Ellison watching an old interview of himself, mm-hmm. which kind of shows you like where he is essentially because every washed up person has done that. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Well, and even like me he's, literally yesterday finding what? <laughs> but it's of yourself. Yeah. Well, not even that. Um, I like high school talent show. And I was like, oh, my God, this video does still exist. I thought it was gone forever. And Aww. then I was like watching it. But that's it. like your actual like a talent of something like well, this, this was, is his actual talent well, of something. But no, I think there's different context because uh. he's specifically getting ass. I just mean like more so as in character because mm. he's specifically getting ass then like um, because the interview was being like. Uh, what's nicer to or what's better to like solve a crime and have you know justice oh, yeah. what feels better the justice or having uh, the number one bestseller on the new york times bestsellers list and number he, one and he's like well obviously the justice and uh, then he was like i would cut both my hands off before ever writing for fame and money mm-hmm. and so it really shows you how much of either one it was how much he's descended into this I just want person, fame and money. Yeah, who he thought he wasn't, or showing true colors of someone who was lying when all they ever wanted was the fame and glory. Mm-hmm. So both of them are very negative to me. <laughs> or it could be a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah. It could be a bit of a mixture. Like he at first was doing I, I feel like for maybe the good at of it. first, yeah, it was for the good of it and for the justice to bring that to that family. Because but then, it really stirred him at night. Like I these yeah. kids because that's what this thing is like you know this girls were missing and i needed to find them because the cops weren't doing it exactly and yeah. then but then once he got the money mm-hmm. from it and the fame and everything and having that well, number one new york because even in my <laughs> this is so bad even in my head at the time i was like the new york times bestsellers list <laughs> like, yeah like if he was asking me the question yeah but, yeah i mean I, I would like to think I that i would you. think it would be the justice but also, I mean, having that's got to be an amazing Money, feeling. Power Money, power and glory, <laughs> like Lana Del Rey song. Yes. I'm a shit person. No, I totally feel you on that. And also, I mean, it just also just like I said, is more so just going over to the whole character arc and the mm-hmm. development of what we're watching happening with Mr. Ellison and how at this point we know now he is very desperate to do anything to go back and be at that same spot that he was in that interview. He wants to get back there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, And so it's very ironic as well how like he's addicted, how hungry he is to it when he was at that point clearly trying to say like he was doing this all for the good of just helping people out because he makes so many comments about Mm -hmm. well we're gonna be rich yeah like we won't ever have to worry about money again you can tell where his priorities are yeah well that's kind of the money machine though like once you start making money it's kind of like it's a a drug you know Mm -hmm. it's like once you start having it you you just have to have more and more and more to fuel you know yeah fuel that Uh, i was thinking of like what's that song the do 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 uh, do, doing crystal meth will lift do, you up do, until do, you do, break. Do. Don't stop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, I know what song you're talking about, but I don't know <laughs> what it is. It just makes me think about like how you'll never reach that high again, mm-hmm. which is basically that song's about crystal meth. So, uh, 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 oh, I really like that song. That's like I a want uh, something uh, else. Give that's me like an early two thousand kind of life, semi charmed kind of uh, life. early two thousand song or is that nineties? Nineties. It's nineties. Oh. Wow, that far back. Okay, and so, anyways, um, we have uh, mom, uh, and the um, Ashley, um, uh, making dad's coffee. The next, I, I don't even honestly. 
a lot of this this film, I don't know what time of day or most things are. Oh yeah, I'm, <laughs> for the I'm most part, this it's this morning. morning time. And we yeah. have also seen that Boogie was watching in the back of the hanging. Oh, like that's right. Time. Yeah. Um, and like we see that all of the murders have him. He Boogie sees Mr. Auntie. Boogie and all the yeah. crimes. Yeah. Um, but yes, little girl. Ashley, it's, I can't remember her name. I, <laughs> no, girl. literally because I I paused for a moment because I said mom and redhead. <laughs> Mom and redhead and make dad's mom coffee. Mom and little red. Little red. Yeah, but they, they make the coffee and the mom, and this is the very uh, foreshadowing as well because mom mm-hmm. tells Ashley, okay, he but coffee a he's way. very particular about his coffee. Yes. So it already is well, going I mean, to show you. You press that French press down too hard, you're going to get too many grounds in your coffee. I don't know so. how to make coffee. I'm not a coffee connoisseur. Me neither. Mm. I, I just Starbucks drink, for five years. I just drink coffee black. Yeah. With a little bit of sugar. Mm hmm. At the at diners, I drink it just straight black. Mm. Oh, except for there was one time I was somewhere, and I swear, I swear to God, they mix this beans with the canned juice of canned green beans. What? Like instead they of mixed... water, it felt like they t- like brewed it with the like runoff <laughs> juice from canned green beans. Oh, that's really gross. It was no? the most dis- yes, oh, it but... was the most disgusting thing wow. I've ever. I was like. Bleh. That's wild. I the can food's only great. imagine. Yeah. And th- that's a great little place here in Waco. So I won't name well, it. We won't name. mention a name. But yeah, um, <laughs> there's only like three cows. But okay, anyways. <laughs> um, so after um, he sees all of that, they're making the coffee. She takes him the coffee. Deputy so and so gives Ellison all the info on all the murders that he asked him about. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, I think, is even asking, like, do you think all of these are connected? Essentially. Yeah, and and, like, what? Because he's. Telling him he's listing off. We've got the Martinez Martinez family on eight two two four Billington, Sacramento, and then he says two oh, nine. To live, yeah, yeah. That was the name of the family that burned up in the car, um, and our barbecue. And uh-huh. then he says, and then two nine seven six Piedmont Way, St. Louis, um, was the was the sleepy time yes, murders. Murder. So he's basically, connecting. and he goes, wait, two nine seven six, and he was like, wait, what? Yeah, so they're and all connected. And then that's when mm-hmm. that's when deputy so and so is being like, "Wait, do you think they're connected?" Mm-hmm. And he was but like, "Uh, I'm 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 just going to figure it out." He's brushing him off essentially. But we realize that that's where the Miller family mm-hmm. or the Stevensons, so they were the Miller family, the Piedmont the Piedmont Way St. Louis people, but the Stevensons who were hanged in their backyard moved um whenever they moved there, they lived in the Miller's family house yeah. before that. And so um, we're seeing the connections ourselves getting tied together. And he also is noticing the pattern of how each um, case as well has a child that is missing. A kid gets abducted. So he's trying to figure out now where are all these children going to? um, Who's doing these murders? Um, And now he has this Mr. Boogie that's like in everything. So it's like, who is this other third party that I have no idea who he is? No information on. Yeah. Um, And I think at one point, too, um, um, is, the, is this the part where Mr. Boogie's head moves? Yes, yes. it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mr. Boogie's head moves on in the picture on the laptop. Because he's sitting there scary. like really studying the, the address yeah. where the Millers had moved from and stuff. And mm-hmm. then all, while he's looking at that, Boogie's head turns to look at him. Yeah. And then we see that there's uh, the children's hands. Were the things that were dragging him or pulling him down whenever he was falling through the hole in the ceiling. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so. Terrifying. Um, yeah. And so that's whenever um, at this point, I think he goes back to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, but he wakes up in the middle of the night. Um, very Amityville horror. Yeah. Because the projector starts playing um, and you just hear it in the background. So he goes to the room and he goes to see what's happening. And he sees um, as he's watching the film. He notices Mr. Boogie again in one of the other films. I'm not. Oh, and the family hanging out, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is where. OK. Yes. Yeah, so this is where mm-hmm. maybe I had just mentioned that earlier. It was like, OK, uh-huh. um, because that's well, whenever oh, he, he wakes to the film rolling of the family hanging out. Yeah. And then he says, oh, what did I put? Ooh, from picture to outside their house. Yeah, what? because that's whenever he notices that Mr. Boogie is in the family tree hanging out video. And then he prints it out and then he puts it to the window. And then whenever he moves it oh, from the frame, yeah. you see Bagul out in the in Fucking the wild. watching him. And that was good. And the outside. Yeah, okay, it was that, scary. That was I a was good like, job. I don't understand my notes. I put ooh, yeah. from picture to outside house. Yeah. 
<laughs> but that's exactly what happens because that's how it literally moves. He's uh, he moves the frame he of the picture, and, and you still see him in the real life, and it's really creepy because whenever it cuts to him like wiping his eyes and like freaking out, he's gone. Yeah, and so he gets a bat and he's walking outside because he's freaking out at this point. And then when he goes out there, he's looking around and through the bushes, you see these little glowing eyes, and you're like, "What the fuck is that?" And it's fucking, it's Trevor, fucking Trevor outside again, shivering and shaking that's just like what in the my bushes. Notes say. It's a fucking Trevor. Yeah, he's fucking Trevor outside. Because I, I was about like, to be hypothermic. Like, Damn son, you've watched this man or allegedly this man kill like eight families what the fuck do you think your bat's gonna do yeah you're going out there with this baseball bat and i'm like hey, your bat's not gonna do shit bro and, and he gets yeah. out there but it's just fucking trevor. It's and, just fucking trevor and of course then he's going back inside the mom's woken up she's really well, pissed off because but huh, whoo, huh. before he gets back inside like oh oh yeah he goes he, back he in goes, he goes back in and then he comes out to and get he gets the, bat. the flashlight and the bat yeah because he dropped both both yes but there's a puppy. There's a dog out there. It's, it's a, not a puppy. It's, it's a, a full big grown donkey dog. And big he's dog. growling because Ugh. behind Mr. Ellison, there are these ghostly kids that he can't see. But the dog obviously senses their presence and can see them. And so he's growling. And the dog is a symbol of a ghoul. Oh, that, because the scorpion, right. the snake, and the and dog, dog. Uh-huh. were what we see in the occult drawings later. Mm-hmm. So that was why those three specific animals came into play. Yeah. Which was super cool. Mm-hmm. I love I love a little shit like that. Yeah. That was nice. How it all ties together. Yeah. And so um, he then ends up getting back to the mom at like the door and he's like, we got to go. We are leaving. We got to go. I don't want to be here anymore. And so that's whenever he. Well, um, well oh. he's not saying that yet. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, the mom wants him to drop the book at this point. Yeah. She's that's right. basically being like, OK, no. And he's kind of enough. freaking out, too. Yeah. But, but and- it's not the breaking point yet and she, he's he's telling her like he just really wants a hit and i think this is the point whenever he even tells her like that's his like priority or whatever his like um legacy or something like that right not, not quite because no, that's when I, she finds out but she's she's basically like accusing him like she's like you never break into the whiskey this early and uh, she's like clearly something is eating you up like yeah. something is bothering Something's you wrong. and you're not telling me yeah um and she was like, we just, we need to get away from here. We need to move away. And, and then he's just like, no, like we can't. And then yeah. so deputy so-and-so comes in though. That's right. And this is where he's like, look. I know. You, I need to be in the loop. Mm-hmm. Because I know like I can tell when there's connected murders when I see him. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. And if you, if you want me to be able to help at all, like I, I got to know. What's going the on. The slightest bit of like yeah. what you're thinking or what you're onto. Like mm-hmm. we have to be on the same page. Exactly. Basically. Um, And that's whenever the, they start going all the murder notes and it's been happening all the way dating back to the 1960s. And mm-hmm. that's whenever in deputy so-and-so is like, well, this man has to be like 60 or 70 years old if this gets the same person killing them. And, um, that's and he's what, kind of showing them he, him all the things and he sees, he shows deputy so-and-so the symbol and he's like, that's the occult. That's just that's just the cult. Yeah. Like, uh, uh-uh. uh. So that's when they tell him you can, you need to call the professional Mr. Jonas because Professor he Jonas. is a, a cult crime specialist. Mm-hmm. And we also get to see the lawnmower video after this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's asking, um, he's asking deputy so-and-so to find out where the drowning happened. That's right. Yeah. Those Before drowning murders. Part. But yes, then we get lawn work 86. Yes. This is good. Yeah, so I like this one. we're watching a family through uh, bay windows through their house, and they're kind of chilling, hanging out. But then it cuts to a uh, outside some hella shaky lawn. camera work yeah. too. And then we see a lawnmower just going around the yard, and then it finally just comes up to one of the daughters or a mom or one of la- a lady, and someone's just, head. We, yep, just cuts over it. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's so it's so abrupt, so jarring as well. For you're sitting there for a hot second, just watching this lawnmower get pushed along, uh-huh. and so you're. You're along for the ride. Yeah. Yeah. But then it's, it just keeps like edging you yeah. ever so slightly. It's longer than you expect. And then it all of a sudden it's her. like, Bram! and then even him, cause it jumps to him and he jumps and he's yeah. obviously having a hard time stomaching that one. Cause it's pretty intense. And they give you a jump scare music. Mm-hmm. There's a jump, there's a cue in the music yeah. is there as well. But, um, yeah. And that's when he really starts to be like, Ooh, yeah. shit. Um, and, and so after this, we get him actually getting a call, Skype call, essentially from Professor Jonas. Mm-hmm. Um, and there he's mentioning like, well, that symbol you sent me, it's not like a pentagram or a pentagon or what I said. Pent- I said it's not a pentagon. <laughs> <laughs> the pentagon. It's not a pentagram. It's something that's even like 
predates that. It's yeah. uh, symbol associated with Bagul. Bagul, a, a pagan Babylon, deity. Uh, yeah, pagan deity, and it dates all the way back to Babylonian times. Yeah, and it's uh, he's the, the eater of children. Eater, <clears throat> eater of children. Yeah, he eats children. And um, he is after the he essentially uses the children to kill the families and then he takes that child's soul. Each story um, involves mm-hmm. a way that he lures the kid away from the physical world and then into his nether world mm-hmm. where he can feed on their souls and then which I guess before f- control them. film, I guess he worked through like paintings or pictures and drawings. Yeah, I'm like, sure. I was like, like the nun. Yeah. And the conjuring mm-hmm. uh, too. Popping out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we have um, the, it's back I feel to- like he could also almost just exist in pure imagination. You mm-hmm. think about him too much and he mm-hmm. don't think about him. Don't think about him. No. Um, and so we, it's nighttime again and everybody's asleep. But like just the other night we have the projector coming on in the middle of the night. And, but we got a very like dramatic scene of him locking everything, everything. up. Oh, that's right. Yes. And, and this then is he just still, this still s- somehow wakes to the projector. Worrying. And it's all out. Yeah. Yes. And everything's set up. out. Mm-hmm. And so he's just like, what the fuck? Yeah. And at this point, that's whenever this is we where have, I put bro, turn on a fucking light. Yeah. <laughs> he, he ends up going to, um, the attic, right? Is it the attic? Um, so, okay. Here is, he wakes again to the murders playing and mm-hmm. stuff, the hanging. And, um, He's he's going to investigate right now. Mm-hmm. And this is where he goes to the kitchen. And while he's like turning the corner, we get the. Boom oh, one of the kids. Like, of runs Stephanie's by face. Yes, no, Stephanie's oh. face like right next to his. She's not even running at this point. Oh, that's Her right. Face is just right next to his. That's right. Yes. And it's uh, I honestly didn't care. It was laughable. Very much. Yeah. yeah. It's very like a. Uh, uh, from like Amityville, like how we didn't like seeing little ghost girl. Yeah. Yeah. But then there were some of them that I didn't mind as much. It mm-hmm. was just her face was so, it was overdone. Mm-hmm. I felt, um, but there were other points. So then we we're kind of getting snippets of each mm-hmm. of these kids running through and there, it's almost like they're taking turns leading him throughout the house. Yeah. Where they want him to go. But then there was the last boy. I was like, Damn, the one sorority squatting at the end of the hallway like got me because it was it was the biggest guy, the yeah. biggest boy. Um, he was just like kind of perched, you know, like yeah. sorority squat at the end of the hallway. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck. And then the way he like started running up to him, I was like, yeah. oh, 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 no, 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 no. It's very scary. It was. Mm-hmm. And he ends up making his way going to the attic again once more. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's because he had seen all of his children in bed too. Mm-hmm. He checked everything oh, and even checked wait. the wife's room. No, 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 not yet. Mm-hmm. Not yet, because he goes. And, oh, at Ashley's room. Yeah, mm-hmm. he goes to make sure all of his children are in bed, but Ashley. He thinks is sitting, Ashley's asleep, but she's not asleep. She's not. Yeah, she's, she's looking over the at her corner, and we see Stephanie in the corner saying shh and like shaking her head with her finger over yeah. her lips and has painted Boogie and the Hanging Family on the wall. On the wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And once again, we have another kid being shh. Yeah. Just like in the other movie. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Telling them to shh. These yes. girls don't want their secrets told. No. They're like, don't, don't, don't tell them about don't this. They're going to think you're crazy. And so. Um, but then this is where he falls asleep on the couch with the bat. So deputy yes. so-and-so comes back in. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, he falls and that's whenever, um, he starts telling him, you know, like, I think there's something up in the house and that's whenever deputy so-and-so is like, look, I've seen you have a bottle of whiskey every time I come over. Yeah. You're obviously moved into a house where murders and bad shit happened. Like you're and probably going to see that things. his wife doesn't know. He's like, you're bearing all this alone. Yeah. You're doing mm-hmm. this by yourself. Yeah. Your and mind's so, probably playing tricks And even you. Deputy So-and-so is like, no, I believe all in the supernatural stuff. Like, that's why I think, like, you're probably, like, losing he's like, your mind. He's like, I not spend a single night in this house. Yeah. Absolutely not. And he's, like, he's he even just like, money. he's like, go outside. Like, you think you need to get away from the house. You just got to clear your head. Yeah. Just like Amityville. And so <laughs> that's whenever um, we see that um, the mom is getting onto Ashley because she ended up drawing on the wall. And she drew a picture of Stephanie hanging on a little like, Swinging on swing, her little rope swing. swing. Mm-hmm. Which, because there was a tire, tire swing, swing yeah. from that same branch that she then hung her family from. Yeah. 
Um, and so mom is freaking out because Ashley then is like, well, that's because what dad is writing his book about and like how she lived here and she died and all this stuff. And the mom but she didn't want me to draw it in my room because that was her brother's room at the time. <laughs> yeah. And so the mom is mad, mad. She is pissed off. They are mm-hmm. fighting in the room. She's had it. It's the last straw. She that's was like, whenever... you told me it didn't, we didn't move in two houses down. And he's like, well, that's, you didn't. You didn't. Yeah. And she was like, but it happened here. And he was like, no. And then she was like, what? And he was like, it happened in the backyard. And she's yeah. like, motherfucker. Literally. <laughs> and, and at this point, too, Same she thing. she feels insulted because then he's like, you know, his writing is his legacy. And she's like, no, I am your legacy. Our marriage is. Your children are. Yeah, your are. children are your legacy. Like, I not, am your life. Like, I'm right in front of you. We're mm-hmm. the people here in front of you. And mm-hmm. you are. Are bringing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're missing all the important things. Yeah. And so that's whenever I think at that point, once again, we just brush things under the rug. I don't know. But it, it I think it's dreamy. He's it's I nighttime have, again. Yeah. I just have yeah. flashlight being. Oh, because yeah. It's so the projector flash, comes on again. Well, we flashed to him in bed with a light being shined. Oh, that's on right. Him. Someone's recording him. It's that's a projector. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. A recorder. And then he wakes up to the whirring of the projector. Running. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's whenever that's this is the point whenever he makes his way to the attic because the projector is now in the attic. Yeah, because the projector is not. He like hears it going and he like walks in and it's not even there. He's hearing it going. It's not, but in, it's the not office. in his office. Oh, that's right. Because he's like this. And that's why I was like, wait, is this a dream or is this not a dream? Is this real life? But it is real life. And he's being led to the attic. It's mm-hmm. open. There's like the light is flickering. Yeah. And there's the music here is very creepy as well i really liked it mm-hmm. and, and he, he makes his way up and that's sins. whenever he gets up there and he sees all the kids just sitting there watching the the film yeah and a film going on and they turn their heads and, and go then, and then we see bagul coming down the hallway mm-hmm. of whatever film is on the film or his world whatever it is and then he comes all the way yeah. up to the screen and then whenever it's like up to the screen he like Puts his head down Bang. and scares the crap out of right. um, Allison, one. me too, <laughs> including. And he like goes all the way down the stairs, like da 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 falls That's what down. I don't understand how his wife, like right then. Yeah, I didn't wake up hearing all a that. A whole yeah, grown ass man. <laughs> once again, he falls down, down the whole fucking stairs. Um, and um, that's whenever, even when he just falls all the way down, the whole freaking like, <laughs> but Ghoul is acting out at this point. He, the whole like, He's like film set and film. all the films get thrown at him <laughs> on the ground. And like right He's next to him mad. falling at him and um that's whenever he takes it all he takes it outside and he starts to burn it he's like um, you're not supposed to be this smart uh-huh. you're just supposed to let me haunt and take yeah. your little kid and exactly. let them kill you and so he he takes all that film he takes it outside and burns it in and like I'm a little like, fire pit what good is that gonna right do? and he gets the family Ooh, the music as it burned the music as it was burning was also was very great. good yeah. i wonder if it was from the same song because it felt very similar vibes yeah. It's a long um, song. Well, just ultimately it was terrifying. That whole um, song's like they, they only had to get licensing for one song. Like, like you know, they're like, we're going to use the soundtrack for the whole movie. After, <laughs> literally. And so um, they end up fleeing the town. They get in the car. But as they're like trying to leave, that's whenever they get pulled over by the same sheriff from the beginning. And of course, he's just like kind of giving them a I hard like how time. The wife didn't even question him at yeah. all either. She was like, no. okay, yep. Mm-hmm. We're getting the kids. And she, she, oh, of course, she been wanting to get out of there. And so the sheriff is giving him a hard time, but that's whenever he's trying to explain, like, no, we're just trying to get out of town. And he's like, I'm she, just trying to take your advice and leave town mm-hmm. and never look back, just like you told me to yep. whenever I first got here. And then the sheriff is just like, wait, you know, nobody, what? like, tried what? to what? run you out, right? And he's like, no. Obviously, because the sheriff is just like has his own agenda of not wanting to be like bad mouth in like yeah. a book or something. But he's like, I don't want my town people, like, I don't want to read in your book that you got. Mm-hmm. chased out of town by some crazy angry town folk but since he's just like no i'm just leaving he's like well then i don't see why i gotta give you a ticket and he rips I'll need it your up autograph. exactly yeah and lets them go um he says he says oh and then he do says me a favor keep it yeah. under 60 until you reach county line you and you're someone, someone else's, else's problem. problem and then he's like uh oh and then even ellison is like He's like, when the dude is asking about the book, he's like, there's not going to be a book. And then the mom is even like, there's not going to be a book. And Did he's like, they're that? not going to be a book. Yeah. And I'm like, there's still going to be a fucking be book, but not really. Nope. There's not. He's going to be a video. Yep. Because so that's they're whenever not going to last much longer. They end up going home um, to their mansion. If you haven't clued in yet, the murders happened because, oh, and we had found out when he, ever he was talking with everyone. Yeah. Oh, not quite No, yet. not yet. No, it's about to happen. Yeah. yeah. So but you can infer. Like, yeah. Once the Stevensons had moved from the Miller family house, it was like, mm, maybe the murders happen in the next house. 
Yeah. That's exactly. I automatically, like I you remember the together. first time I watched it, I was like, okay, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. And so whenever he was moving away, I was like, Mm-mm-mm. yeah, cause you're already like this thinking like, bad. this is bad this news. Is real bad. So he ends up moving back with the family into their mansion because they honestly still hadn't even sold it. He was paying mortgages on both of the houses at this point. Um, but they move back into their big ass house. And that's whenever um, he gets a phone call from Jonas and he's telling him um, more about, you know, put goal info and that's whenever mm-hmm. And he's uh, already screened three like yeah. three calls from so and so deputy so and so. And that's whenever he tells uh Jonas like, well what if someone burns like all the footage and all the stuff and all these portals like for Bagul to get into and that's whenever Jonas Because just, Jonas like, has told him that the images were gateways to his realm mm-hmm. and that he could abduct the viewers in the images themselves. Yeah. And he's basically just like, What do you mean? Yeah. Like no. <laughs> That's not I love thing. that reaction. Yeah. Well, because he's just so. It's like, basically exactly how he was. He was yeah. like, "What do you mean, destroy the image?" Yeah. Because then I, he is teetering on this. This isn't real. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But it's like, but bro, because, you're the expert. But then, because and you Jonas is just like, "What kind of book are you writing?" And he's like, "I'm not even writing a book at all. I don't even think." Yeah. And he declines deputy so and so one more time. I believe scorpion, snake, and black dog. As well. That's right. Yes, and how they're all connected, mm-hmm. and. That's whenever he he's going back to his attic to like in this house that he has, you know, his old house and he's going to put some shit up there. And that's whenever we have the fucking box again of home videos that he he, just burned. Yeah. And so he's freaked out. Obviously, the home movies are back, but there is a new little film reel attached to it that says extended cut endings. Yeah. And so he ends up doing his his homework and splicing (laughs) it up, the bonus footage and putting it all together. And he's watching the murders. And at this point now we're also getting deputy so-and-so calling again. And, um, that's whenever we have, um, him telling him that like the dates and the addresses, everything links up chronologically. The lawn massacre, the 1966 Oregon drownings, everything. And he's, He's like, if they've all the pre- previ- previous people lived like, in the house where yeah. a murder happened before. And he says, so you just, not only did you just speed up his timeline, you put yourself directly right in Right in it. the middle of it. Yeah. You've put yourself in the line of fire. Yeah. And so all these extended cuts then are showing the real truth of these little kids are the ones that are doing the murders. We and, see Stephanie climb out of the tree mm-hmm. and all the other little kids. And as they get to frame, they go, shh. Our favorite and thing. Did a little shushing. And that's whenever he's like, he's watching this. And you can tell we're supposed to be watching him progressively getting more and more like sickish because he's being poisoned. He's by getting super disoriented. None other than his Redhead. daughter, the redhead, <laughs> Ashley. Ashley. <laughs> because she, he had, she'd made her coffee just like it was foreshadowed earlier where she's Good now been making him coffee. Because and we saw had him little, lift his coffee cup and earlier. And it's like green. Yes. And it had the... It well earlier before even when he was oh, talking about Jonas, little note underneath it, it had the mm-hmm. note stuck to it. Yeah, and mm-hmm. then now we see that whenever he looks back in it, yes, it's it's green, mm-hmm. and then the note under it says "Good night, Danny." Yep, it's and like, he ends up passing out, and that's whenever we have him waking up in um on the floor with all and of his says, family members around him. I like that you made the movies longer. They're better this way. Yeah. It's very like, creepy. Fuck you, little kid. And she's like, I'm going to make you famous now, daddy. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry, daddy. I'll mm-hmm. make you famous again. And so that's whenever she ends up packing away at them. Mm-hmm. And she's she's the one that's, she's filming it all. She's been filming them. Mm-hmm. And we end with some blood covered walls and Ashley saying, shh. Yep. Which is the thumbnail for most of it is the yeah. little girl. With yeah. With the, the blood. blood on the wall and the, mm-hmm. having it. Uh, the blood look like the cool. and then we have she, and she really did she really painted the walls now yep and she sure did with all the blood and mm-hmm. that's whenever we have her then entering the footage um with all the other children as they are um oh that's right because whenever the children are looking at her as she's there looking at them the goal comes from behind her yeah as yeah, she tilts her head she's like sitting there writing in the top of the shoe mm-hmm. box i keep calling it a shoe box it's not a shoe box it's but the a box the lid, yeah and they're of watching their murder, yeah because the reel of the footage is still going on mm-hmm. so the, all the kids are there and we're watching it while mm-hmm. it's playing and they're there like waiting for her and then she once she finishes she goes and moves in front of them and this part i i love this part it did get me. Yeah. Because, yeah, she's just sitting there staring at them, and then they tilt their head, and, and so he's she right tilts hers. Him. And as she does, boom. Yeah. And I liked that. I liked that a lot. And um, um, she ends up joining them in their world. He just picks her up, mm-hmm. and then he walks right into the film. Yep. 
and he he takes her with him. Mm-hmm. And then we see house painting, two thousand yep. or twelve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then at the end, he comes and has a little jump scare again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would have just like earlier. I would have been fine without if it that was little part. Just the ending out with the house paintings, two thousand twelve, yeah. and that like pans away into darkness. Mm-hmm. Um, the the last little added. I imagine in theaters that had to have been fucking terrifying. Yeah. To just it's all like of a sudden see. Boom. Yeah. All of a sudden see his face come in. It's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. No. So I, I, I can, I can get why they did it. It honestly was. Because I, I, I still like, remember what? how terrified I was of it. Because I was even anticipating it in this one and it still got me. Um, Sometimes but, that anticipation gets you worse, though. Mm-hmm. When you, you when already you're know sitting it's there knowing that it's happening and you're like, uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, when's it going to happen? It's like, the again, the whole idea of a jack in the box. Yeah. Just sitting there turning it and turning it and knowing that it's going to explode, but you don't know when. Um, yes. I'm excited to give it a boot rating. How many? I'm going to give it a, uh, a four. Four. 4.5. Okay. A I was 4. about 5. to be like, I feel like this was a little low. 4.5. Actually. Okay. Yeah. What's that? Actually, I give it a five. Yeah. I give it a five. I, was I give it a five. It. Yeah. Um, because I liked it ever since I first seen it. This um, is it probably was a really the, good film. The I remember first one where I felt like you legitimately didn't want to t- like. Yeah. Watch no it. other ones where have I have we spoken about where you felt like actually kind of scared. No. Yeah. Even and watching this one, it, you're like, I was no, like, I really uh, don't want to talk about him. I don't. Yeah. He still freaks me out. But I remember it really sticking with me. It really scared me. It's got a good storyline. It really, um, the Super 8 film fi- film footage is really cool. It really adds a different layer and dimension mm-hmm. to like the storytelling. Um, even with us, like it's kind of like a. I, I'm a sucker for a who done it. Yeah. And so it's kind of like that mixed with horror. It's like clue. Yeah, because you're you're kind of unraveling this mystery with our protagonist as you the story's going true on. True crime and, with ghosts. And just as what more can exactly, you want? and just as much as like he's unraveling it and then he becomes a part of it. It's like you're doing the same thing and becoming a part mm-hmm. of it as well. Yeah. Um and it's kind of then if you're thinking about it even more of like do, do, do like not third or fourth walling it but like the extra dimension of like he he's watching these people on film getting murdered and we're watching this family getting murdered on film so and then it comes to find us? out yeah exactly yeah it's kind of like it melts your mind a little bit if you think mm-hmm. too hard but it's fun i liked it it's good solid acting solid storyline solid scares um the music was obviously pretty good. It paired, paired well with all the scenes that were happening. So I give it a five. Five boos. Five booski boos. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My, it's pretty up there for me. Um, I'm trying to decide. I, I feel like I'm at a 4.5. 4.5. It's a super what kept enjoyable. It, tell me what kept it from that extra 0. 0.5. I don't know. Uh huh. I guess just I'm just trying heart. to think of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. Your cold, cold heart. My cold, dead heart. <laughs> no, I don't know. I actually don't know. I'm peer but pressuring it, you into a five. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just trying to think of like the films I've given fives before. And yeah. I mean, I get it. It's a, it's a very coveted ta-ha, five, yeah. five boobs. Wow. I really, I really did super enjoy this film though. There, I You're not like going to give were, it the golden buzzer. Actually, I've remembered what made it point five, five drop. Yeah, it's Stephanie's face. Mm, okay, gotcha. It's, it's the little girl's face, and yeah, there's a that. few moments where I wish that was less. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or even a few moments where like there was maybe uh, for cut for time. There could be some moments where it's like that's not necessarily necessary. Yeah, it, maybe. And it's just like I said, that kid at the end of the hallway. Whenever he ran up. You couldn't really see his face. And that was more terrifying so, to me. Mm-hmm. Sorority squad. And yeah. Mm-hmm. At the end. Um, then. Uh, then her face like popping up right next. It was very much just. I mean, because we just watched it. The 2005 Amityville with the yeah. face at Michael washing his hands in the scene mm-hmm. um, in the sink. And that yes. one just being like blah, 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 right next to his face. It gave me very similar vibes. And mm-hmm. I, I just don't. This movie had a lot super, of parallels. Yeah. 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 It really did. Um, super cheap scares like that. Yeah. Yeah. Billy and uh, Trevor were 12. They're like, I'm 12 yep. years old. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them said that at the breakfast table. That's funny. Well, uh, I guess one was, was the dinner table. And but. there was also a little sister as well. 
Yep. Mm-hmm. So fun. We um, totally planned this. We didn't, but um, yeah. So I four point five, and because and a five. So it's a four point seven five. Because Stephanie's face. Mm-hmm. The other kids' faces didn't bother me as mm-hmm. much. It was really Stephanie's. Well, and I think because it so was so on. well, and it was so close to the full screen view. That's true. You know, the other it kids was weren't up close and personal. Uh huh. Hers just Maybe, had much and, more and, makeup. Well, and it was probably also, to me, it was more so the delivery. Yeah. Because of how it's like right there next to them. Mm-hmm. Like it was just, if she would have been somewhere else, or I don't know. But I but don't know. then like there's times in the conj- in the original but, Conjuring, the first Conjuring mm-hmm. with the woman crying who killed Rory, her son. Yeah. Whenever. Um, you didn't like that either. No, I loved that. Oh, I thought you did it. Yeah. No, oh, okay. I, I didn't like the wardrobe scene. Okay. But whenever Lorraine turns her head and we've got the mom just sitting there be like. Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, ooh, look what she made me do. Yeah. I loved it because yeah. her face was just it was an abrupt scare, but her face was so natural. Yeah. It just looked like a woman who'd been like mind you like slightly pallid, mm-hmm. but she'd just been crying. There was no yeah. extra work done to her face. Now, Stephanie's face had the like, cracks like almost as if she was a little ceramic doll that had been smashed. Yeah. And tried to glue back together. It was just too much. Yeah. A little mm-hmm. too much for me. But otherwise, phenomenal film. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Loved everything about it. I loved it the first time I saw it. Would watch it again. I'm excited to recommend. get to cover Sinister 2. Sinister 2, which yeah. is what we'll do next week. Next week. Yeah. I haven't uh, seen it in a while, so I really don't remember too much about it. Just I really don't because I'd yeah. only seen this one once. And gotcha. I did go immediately watch Sinister 2 after it. Gotcha. Um, Double feature. So... Mm-hmm. Which I'm, I'm people could do to that see. too with this double feature. Yeah. Um, but once again, we're in the lovely Rogue Media Network studios. That's Take right. good such care of us. Thank you for sticking out with us as we're recording for this long one. Um, we implore everybody to uh, go listen to all the other podcasts that they have, like the Poultry Cows um, and blah. some and blah. <laughs> um, and Bros, Foes, and Heroes is another one I get mm-hmm. on my ads a lot. Um, you can check those all out at roguemedianetwork.com or on any of your main podcasting platforms, the biggest two being Apple Podcasts and also Spotify. Spoofy. But wherever you do listen, don't forget to rate, review, like, and subscribe. That's right. Cause that is the only way we can get ahead in this world. Mm-hmm. And uh, it either it really makes helps. our day or it makes us very sad. Obviously. So um, yep. make our day. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. It makes me cry. Um, and so if you want to follow us or talk to us or give us any deets on like movies you want us to cover or just want to like talk and chat about your favorite horror movie films you can also find us on our social media platform being our big or only only yeah. one being instagram and that is at boobays podcast and that is uh b-o-o-b-a-e-s because we're your boobays not your boo babes that's right yeah and, and yeah until yeah. next time you guys bye base bye base This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. Are you ready for a rewarding career in the electrical industry? Quality Electric of the Coastal Carolinas, QECC, is looking for qualified electricians and electrical helpers to join its Charleston team. QECC offers guaranteed full-time hours, make up to $30 per hour with possible performance bonuses and career growth opportunities. Enjoy benefits like health insurance, dental and vision coverage, 401k plans, and more. If you're a motivated, experienced electrician, this job is for you. QECC is an equal opportunity employer. For all job inquiries, send email to hr at qeccinc.com.